Well, I thought we'd better have a closer look at our latest acquisition. Hmm. <laughs> Welcome to the Man Cave. Let the games begin. Right, man cavers, on editing the video yesterday, the one I posted last night about this, I noticed half of it was missing. I don't know why, maybe I didn't press record on the camera, but I don't know, for some reason, there was about five minutes before I started about, oh, we'll put diesel in there, I actually did do a little talk through, and that footage is gone. It's not on the camera anywhere, so gremlins of saying... So I thought we'd better have a closer look at this thing today. Because I didn't really tell you a lot about it yesterday because all I was barbling on about didn't come out in the camera. This is an Enfield diesel. I'm sure you guys have worked that out by now. But yes, I think by my limited research and all I could find out, there's very little I could find out. If any of you guys can find a website to give specifications of this, I would be over the moon, but I've had a quick Google about Enfield Diesel. It comes up with Enfield Diesel motorcycles. I put in Enfield Twin Diesel. Um, I think, think, this is a HO2 Mark IV. Now, I'm not sure whether um, they did a Mark I and Mark II. I'm assuming they did a Mark III. But I think this is an HO2 Mark IV. Um, I'll get you some footage if you guys do want to pause this at any point so you can see bits of the engine and then compare them with Google Images like I did. The bit what gave it away for me being Mark IV, I think, is this engine breather. It looks like the other ones, they have that sort of up here somewhere. So I think this is an HL2 Mark IV, which were a lot of the time marine engine. Um, yeah, some sort of marine engine. One thing I have noticed only today, about 10 minutes ago, that I hadn't noticed yesterday. That pulley is free spinning. So I'm wondering, have we got some sort of centrifugal clutch in there? Because she spins free without the engine. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to get my... Imperial adjustable on here. See if we can get that open and see if this will I should come off because that's spinning free on whatever bearing it's on. So I'm hoping that, and that's yeah, it's coming backwards and forwards. So I'm assuming once this is off, that'll just come off. And I'm wondering if we've got a set of shoes in here, you know, or some rubber or some centrifugal clutch. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit you guys down here. Here we are. We'll get the old spanner out and see if we can get it. See if this thing will come undone for a start. Or is it going to turn the engine? Normally, things with these old engines, they normally... That's turning the engine. What about a quick crack? Did that go or just slip off? No, nope, that went, look. That went. Cool. So let's see if this pulley actually comes off and see what's under there. Just out of curiosity, whilst on tight. Because I'm wondering if there's some sort of centrifugal clutch under there, which will be nice because when she's on tick over, this won't be turning if you've got a load on it obviously it won't be turning and when you give her a rev up this will kick in and turn whatever you want to drive look at the size of the bolt everything on here is heavy I mean crikey will this pulley come off oh yeah cool oh, bugger me Jesus that pulley is heavy. 
And look at that, there's a set of shoes in there. We have got a lovely little set of expanding shoes. Not contaminated, not oily, and they don't appear to be worn too much. I mean, they're getting down to the rivets in places, but I think for our purposes, and the spring seat brakes band look. Yeah, all right. I think they will expand out just fine. Yeah. Well, that's good. That spigot shaft there really want oil, and that is sticky. Sticky, sticky, sticky. And I can't believe the weight of this damn pulley. Bloody thing must weigh three stun. So where? Well, there you go. That's what's under there. Yeah, I'm not going to put that on there dry. Let me go get an oil can. And I want to clean that with rag and then oil it. Because that's, that is... Do you know what I mean? That's got the oil's gone sticky. So I'll get the old oil can and I'll be back. Right, we are back. We are back indeed. So, I've got some rag oil can and my trusty spray can with diesel in remember what i said diesel is excellent for cleaning and lubricating so we just want to get all that sticky off that shaft because that was old horrible sticky oil on there you know that all looked good There you go. Yeah, all that sticky has gone. So let's put a bit of oil in there, but not so much that that's going to spread out and get all on your shoes. We'll just put a bit in there, and that should. God, God, bugger, look at the size of that brake drum. God, this thing weighs a ton. An absolute. Right, oh, I can tell you this thing's gonna make me sweat. So, which way around you reckon that looked like that could go that way? Let's have a look. I'm wondering if someone's had this off before because it looks to me like this washer should go that way and take that play out. But we'll have a look. We will have a look. If it does it up so tight that that don't spin free, then we know we've got it wrong. Now I start and run do the nut look. Now I just start and run do the nut. So I think that washer has got to go the other way. That just looked like that washer should have sat this way. That just looked like it matched. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Not worried about things matching too much. So yeah, if any of you guys can find anything out about this, or even find a website, I don't even know what CC this is, what horsepower it is. I know nothing about it. I mean absolutely nothing. But I am going to say one thing. I'm guessing it's a substantial horsepower. Probably, I don't know, 18, 20, maybe more, 22, I don't know. I'm guessing it's going to be a fair size horsepower. But from what I have looked at, That nut ain't fully tightening, unless I ain't meant to. I would have thought it would, but I ain't got to tighten anymore. Of course, that's just 
turn on the engine. But she's spinning free. Oh yes, I'm spinning nice and free, so... I reckon, when that engine's revved... Now, I don't think that washer should be loose. I reckon there's a spacer missing out of there. Because that should be tight onto the crank. So I shall have to find a large washer or something to go behind there. Although I can see it's been like that quite a while. Because the square edge of this nut has worn off at the back where this washer's been spinning around. So I think that's been like that for a number of years. But I'm not happy with how that's been round. So what we'll do is... Oh, look who's come to see me. Where is he? There he is. Rusty boy. Well, where you gone? Gone for a walk with Grandad? Where is he? I can't even... There he goes. He's gone for a walk with Grandad. There's Mr. Rusty. Oh no, you love to see Mr. Rusty. And he's having a piddle. There you go, ain't he the cutest little thing? Anyhow, back to Enfield. So yes, we have got a centrifugal clutch in there. I think this is an HO2 Mark IV. If anyone want to look at this and, and say, do your pausing, do your freeze framing. I'll hold you some images so you can see key points to look for. If you want to see any specific castings or comparisons to tell me if this is a marine application. Of course, it looks like a lot of these were used in narrow boats. I really don't know. Now this could well be a boat engine and I'll tell you for why. It has provisions for an electric starter motor look. It's got a ring gear on the flywheel and bolt holes for a starter. And if that was in a marine boat, obviously they'd want a, a marine boat. What other sort of boat do you get then? Yeah, if they had it in a boat, obviously they'd want an electric start so they could stand up the helm and hit the old key and fire the infield up. But she is air-cooled, I know that's not water-cooled. Look at the cooling fins on the head. She's definitely air-cooled. But yeah, original gauges, because they've both got Enfield written in there. Oil pressure and oil temperature. We have an oil filter down here. We have a fuel filter up here. The fuel filter house and it's got Fram on it, which is the make, and it because Fram have been making filters for years. So we're obviously got a Fram filter in there. Is that an element in there? Yes, it will be, because it's not on the bottom. So I'm going to have to get an element for that. And obviously an element for the oil filter. This is the decompressor. That somehow lifts out. Why, I don't know. What's in there? Can't really see a lot. Just a peg. There we go. There's just a peg in there. Look. A brass peg. Which I assume lines up with this. Oh, there you go. She sits in there now. Is that meant to come out, do you reckon? Oh, I'll tell you what. Here's a half a screw there, look. And half a screw there. I reckon the thread has gone in that, and that's just pulled that screw out. Oh, that's got the wrong screw in it, but that's what hold that in. There we go. So there we go. There's our Enfield diesel. This should be the sort of uh, bit of the video what started yesterday. Why it didn't come out, I don't know. We've got a nice cast cast bracket it's just g cramped on this trolley um but we've got a nice cast bracket which is good because that'll make it a lot easier to mount on something we can just bolt it down with these bolt holes <clears throat> we have all our injectors are in there i can't see any reason why this engine wouldn't run 
I mean, she's a total beast. Total beast. There we go. Yeah, she is a total beast. What oh, make I think I assume these are Bryce pumps on here. Uh, where's my diesel? Let's get some diesel and give it a little squirt. There we go. Let's give all this linkage a squirt as well. Everything's a bit... Just give all these rack pinions a squirt up. Because I've got all these linkages here and we want all them nice and free. Good as WD-40, this stuff. It's brilliant. Oh, crikey, that's easier already. And where's the start and stop on here? We've got start and stop written here. Look, we've got stop written in there and start written in here. Oh, well, which one's which? Is that stop or is that stop? I don't know. We've actually got a notch here. So if we actually push this back up, somehow, oh, I can't do it one-handed. Cool. But if we push this back, there you go. Well, that did go on there yesterday. So I had the bloody thing on there. That did lock onto there. I can't do it one-handed, so... Yeah. Yeah. So I assume having that arrow pointing to the start is start. And this is probably your stop. But I don't know. I don't even know if this is the start position stop. I haven't got a clue. So this is all things we're going to have to work out when we go to fire this puppy up. No, that ain't a Bryce pump. That's a CAV look. That is CAV. Where did that bit of rag go? What I had. I had a bit of rag here a minute ago. Are you guys looking at it? I had it when I was cleaning that, cleaning that shaft. In the, oh, here it is. She dropped through the ramp onto the floor. So let's have a look. There we go. Yeah, CAV. Let me zoom in a bit. Can we go in a bit more? There we go, CAV. Yeah. And obviously, uh, that injector pump's going to be the same. But the CAV badge will be around the other side, isn't it? Yeah, there it is. CAV is around there. Cool, she's got some cobwebs in here. But the guy did, uh, the guy I got off said he got it four years ago and he never done nothing to it. So, we will have to see, won't we? But I can see very little reason why this puppy shouldn't fire up. I really can't see any reason why it shouldn't. But, there you go. Right, I'm going to leave this video here. I'm burbling on now. When this fuel shortage is over, and I can actually get some diesel, we will put some in there. We'll hook a dummy tank up here somewhere, and pipe him up to there, and we'll fire this thing and see if that swing off. If I've got the energy in me to pull it over. Because believe me, she takes some cranking. She really does take some cranking because she's a big, big lump. Yeah, it's deceiving. That don't look very good on the pictures, but that is about three feet long. So she is an absolute animal. So yes, I'm going to leave the video here. And I'll be back next time. Bye bye for now. Ha <laughs> ha.